with this I'm holding, I want to let Nigeria know that I'm in line with the army constitution. I'm not breaking any protocols here. Because in this book, you can see 2005 addiction. I want to read what loyalty states here. Loyalty is not only for your subordinate, not only for your junior in the military, most especially in the any constitution and any constitution. The nation, loyalty, the nation, the army, and the chain of command relay on the continuing alliance, allegiance, commitment, and support of all who serve. This thing, you know, those who are placed in positions of authority must be loyal. Underline that word. Must be loyal to their subordinates, representing their interests, faithfully dealing with compliance thoroughly, and developing their ability, ability abilities through progressive training. This thing, you know, for their part, that is we, the subordinates, must be, must be loyal to their leaders, I further state, their group and their duty. Such loyalty is expected, but, on the line of word, but, it must also be aimed, you must end it through commitment, self-sacrifice, courage, professionalism, decency and integrity. You have to earn it. You have to show what will make you earn it. Why I must be loyal to you. Now, why I'm reading this is because of the commander I'm under which, which is the chief of army staff, Lieutenant General Tuku Yusuf Buratai. As I'm making this video, I want to let you know that I'm highly disappointed in your command. You should call yourself a coward, a traitor, and a betrayer to the Nigeria as a whole. I don't care what you do. You may think you are God. You may try to kill me. You may try to do this. But I'm not in another business with you because you are no more lawyer. You cannot end my loyalty with what you are doing. You cannot end my loyalty. The CDS, Chief of Defense Staff, I am highly disappointed in you. I am highly disappointed in you in the sense that you are the Chief of Defense Staff. The Army, the Navy, the Air Force, they are under you. You are the piloter of this to bring out the structure of the military. You are filled. To the extent you are even collecting command from Koas, all in the name of loyalty and cabals. I know after this video, you may come, you want to arrest me, you want to do this. Be know that I'm guided by the constitution. You cannot just come and arrest me. I'm ready to face court martial. And my court martial must be open to the whole Nigerians to know. I'm calling on all the independent lawyer to stand by me because this is a matter of urgency. People have dying too much. You should be ashamed of yourself, you that call yourself Chief of Hamista Buratai and the Chief of Esther, the Chief of uh, the, the uh, do you call National Security Advisor, NSA, General Retire, General Mungunu. You are supposed to be ashamed of yourself. The Minister of Defense, you are supposed to be ashamed of yourself. Because you are all from the north. It is the north they are suffering now. The north are dying for nothing. I am a middle belt. But I am a Nigerian and I am consigned Nigerian. I will not say because I am not from north, it is not my concern. No. 
People are trying to leave this country. People are frustrated in this country. Most soldiers will tell you, ah, you want to die for this country. This, not, this country is not worth dying for. Lies. This country is worth dying for if you know the potentials we are carrying. Nigeria, this 2020, you are here in vision. 2020 is all saying, is all about Nigeria. Vision 2020 is telling the world that Nigeria is supposed to be the most richest country in the world. American, they know. They use their octopus to find. <laughs> Good evening to you. Good afternoon to you. Good morning to you from wherever you are watching from. This is Mayegun live. And thank you so much for joining me, my friends on YouTube, my friends on Facebook, from wherever you have the opportunity of joining tonight. Thank you. And if you are going to be watching this video again after this broadcast, thank you to you too. Yeah, I want to talk about this storm. Something like a reminder. But before I get into it, remember that face. Yes. That was uh, Copra Martins, Idakpani. Yes, the same Copra Martins, Idakpani. I, I don't know if uh, uh, Mrs. Uh, Victoria Idakpani is watching. She's a regular on Mayegun's Diary Political. And I think she'll say hi if she's watching. That's her husband. That is the video that he made a year ago, 22nd of June, 2020. And since that day, the day after it, he has gone through hell and he is still in their detention. Everything he complained about, the, it was, the video is longer than that, okay? I just started to remember him because on this Mayegun's Diary Political, we did raise over 375 or so thousand, I mean, thousand naira uh, through the GoFundMe in order to support the young family of Copra Martins in Dakpani while other legal. Uh, mind, you know, decided to represent him free of charge. And that's actually what brought uh, uh, myself and Mrs. Victoria Idakpani somehow to you closer, I'll say. So whereby I do reach out to say, how are you? How are the family? How, is, how are the children? However, recently, we reached out to Mrs. Victoria Idakpani again on Mayegun's Diary Political. Not just monetarily, we also reached out to see how we can help. And that thanks go to uh, my dear sister, Lizzie. She's watching, by the way. So Lizzie reached out to me and she's somebody who said personally, she wants to support young people who are aspiring to make a difference in their journey of life, even though Nigeria has failed everyone, including them. They have no capacity to fight for us anymore, but they will, they will support us. Thank you, Lizzie. I know you're watching, right? Mind you, tell me if the audio is perfect on your screen now that I'm talking before I proceed. So we reached out to Mrs. Victoria Idakbane just uh, recently. I think it was in May last month, and it was incredible, right? So that's why I opened that tonight to let you know that uh, Nigeria, Nigeria, is a place where being a Nigerian is pretty much like a total condemnation of who you are. A, I mean, you know, the humanity in you. No wonder that today, rather than build a country, for those who said they were patriotic and they were your leaders, past and present, who continue to call themselves elder statesmen, Young people are being killed. Young people are being, uh, you know, uh, imprisoned simply because they are asking the old people to please give them life. Empathy, sympathy, humanity are no longer the common traits you see in leadership in Nigeria. Maybe elsewhere in Africa is the same. But in Nigeria, it is even worse now, it is so worse that uh, those who are making all these decisions that brought the country to this level, they have uh, managed to stay on this long through the message of uh, fear, violence, deprivation, incarceration, and on and on, whereby human rights, 
that seems to be recovering back since the uh, you know, since the advent of democracy, uh, 22 or 21 and a half years ago, 22 years ago, I think. That's all that has been lost because a Bokwari came in. And like uh, Kopra Martin Sidakpani said, people are dying. They are dying. Unfortunately, those who are the victims from the Northeast eh, to the Southeast, from the Northwest, to the southwest, from the uh, south center, I mean, north central, eh? to, to, to uh, the Niger Delta and all these regions. Those who are the victims of these unfortunate human beings who are in charge of your destiny, who are making all these decisions for you, those who are victims, they are at each other's jugulars, trying to strangulate one another. Why those who feed on, who feed on your carcass? Continue to live large. Don't let me confuse you, except if you choose to be confused. Nigeria is not working. And I tell you this, right? 90% of those who live in the country will agree with you. But 90% of them will likely not agree with you. That's such arrangement that brought so much deprivation should either be discussed, rearranged, or disbanded. Some people said... Let us restructure. And let me tell you something. The Biafrans of today, IPOB, that started this self-determination for Biafra that has now become a no-going-back movement, whether you like it or not. It is no longer in my control. It is no longer in your control. What many are telling you that uh, maybe with time, they are going to fizzle out. That is one of the reasons why you are where you are today. The IPOB that started uh, this, you know, this, this, this massive self-determination movement that has gained so much national and international, you know, recognition, right? They were actually asking for a restructured Nigeria from the word go. And part of the restructuring they were asking for was that uh, Nigeria should restructure one to restore Nigeria back to pre-1960, where they had their own self-rule in the eastern region, and then re I mean, amend that constitution, whereby change that constitution, where we can say we all agree to still stay together under this uh, condition that uh, we have a choice to leave whenever we want to leave. That was what they initially asked for. Restructure. Restructure. They rather than Nigeria to listen to them. Those who call themselves the rulers. Old, senile, demented uh, rogues. Led by Bokwari. They returned bullets for talks they started killing them now they have killed them to the point whereby killing them may surprise you may may make you feel unsettled ah look, they are just killing them they're just killing them they have been killing them secretly publicly since bukwari came to power like it became a part of the state policy then they changed, they changed their demand completely to Biafra or death because that is exactly what uh, Nigeria promised them. No dialogue. On the other hand, Boko Haram, ISWAP, ISIS, and the rest of all those terrorists in northern Nigeria, eh? after Shekau, is alleged to have killed himself. We haven't seen his body anyway. But you know the story that followed. For six years, the same Bokwari watched the northern Nigeria depleted, destroyed, ruined, schools shot, economy destroyed. People became 
victims. They, they, became, they became victims of uh, ransom for I mean, kidnapping for ransom. Some of them are still living in bondage in six years. But what really sells most and why we are where we are today is because rather than those who are the victims, to understand and see through the lies that the likes of Bukwari and gang have lived on, that they failed to protect them, but created another war so as to cause a distraction while they watch the rest of the northern Nigeria bombed. We didn't know they had plans to take it down south. And it doesn't matter who you are. Eh? You will go down by the bullet of either the bullet of their soldiers, their own uh, uniformed soldiers, or the bullet of their sponsored mercenaries, the Fulani terrorists that are spreading like white fire. We didn't know. So they created the hot spots, gaslighted the Eastern Nigeria in the name of trying to prevent IPOB from becoming another Boko Haram. When all they were asking for legitimately is to have a chart, restore the autonomy that gave the Eastern Nigeria the right to rule and to rule themselves and make laws for themselves change the constitution of that country that will have the impute of the Biafrans in it, whereby they can choose to leave anytime they want through a referendum, but restore, that was the beginning, but they choose to kill them. While they choose to kill the IPOB, gaslight them, some of their leaders thought IPOB was another mass up, was another different kind of uh, Jeun Jeun sponsored, politically sponsored, ethnic faced human rights and the blah 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 secession uh, campaign and let me tell you something i'm a yoruba man and if you understand the, the politics of uh, nigeria very well very very well and not just from the uh prism uh what you got the the, the the myopic uh, lens of your tribe religion and every other thing that possibly suits your bias or biases, right? I'm a Yoruba man. And historically, I can tell you there are many, many of those who became politically prominent, especially the moment uh, this democracy nonsense started. Many, many of them, they were pro Oduduwa Republic. But what people didn't know then was all those noise, all those Nadeko, all those Afeni Feridis, and that for the right of the Yoruba people using the political means, which is understandable to make a difference in any polity. You need political means to make that difference. But until now, I used to believe that that's exactly how it will be. Therefore, people position themselves. They champion different uh, ethnic or tribal political or social, they call it political, I mean, uh, politi uh, so, sorry, socio-political groups. So when you look at them very well, what the champion comes with threats that if you don't give us the if you don't give us a seat on the table in how to share Nigeria, eh? Then we are going to ask our people to ask for a breakup. Do you understand that now? So back in the days, many, many people who became politically prominent, some of them are now old, no more idea, nothing. All the fraud are now exposed. So some of them now believe that maybe IPOB was going to be one of them, and one of those noise. Once they make noise, they gain attention, they will pick their leaders, give them appointments, say to them, everybody will just go to bed. They, they will become elder statesmen. They will become one like Julia and all of that. That's what they expected. But when that didn't happen, in the case of uh, IPOB, then they became somehow the enemies of what they are also living on. I'm talking about the Oaneze Ndigbo, for example. Oaneze Ndigbo, they are in bed with the political arrangements right now in Nigeria. So what they, are, what, what, they will, what they will want to fight for will be 
for a better seat on the table, something that will put them next to the table. Are you with me? So they want to take a seat. Therefore, they can use marginalization of, of egos, which has been the tool that every one of them have been using. Same thing with Afeni Ferry. And so many other people who call themselves social political group. You see them, uh, Niger Delta Elders Forum, social political group, and Middle Belt Elders Forum. When you look at all of them, they will all present themselves as those who are fighting for those tribes or those nationalities. But in, in context, they are in bed with the arrangement in Nigeria, and they will only scream loud if they are being denied a seat on the table where they share your destiny, where they share everything that brought you to this level, the poverty capital of the world, right? Now, when IPOB came, like I said, it was pretty much like, ah, if this one is not going to play ball, it's better we just let everybody know that uh, number one is a scam, okay? Number two, nobody will take him serious because he doesn't have connection inside the system it needs to build a connection inside that system are you following me according to them these same people who have used this tribe socio-political nonsense for years and at the end of the day eh the igbos are still marginalized the yorubas are still marginalized the Aousas are still marginalized the, even the Fulanis, who are the local Fulanis, eh, they are still marginalized. The Middle Belters are still marginalized. Every part, there is no single part of Nigeria that is not marginalized. Oh. But those who are doing the marginalization and those who are their friends, eh, they come from all the tribes. So when they see these young people, me, I'm asking for to do a republic, but I don't have a connection to somebody who is a governor. I am not linked to one person who is a minister. Something that they can say, ah, you know, is a, is a friend to that minister. Oh, is a very, you know what I'm talking about? Since we don't have that, according to them, they are just wasting their time. Someone said I should talk more about uh, Ninas. I love what Ninas is doing, but there's something I don't like about them. And I'm saying this to all of you now. And I know some of you watch me as well. I love what you are doing, especially your advocacy. What you have done so far, different petitions, different awareness, all of those things. I have to say, I personally feel, I mean, I personally show, I mean, appreciate that. And I know many people do because I learned a lot from your researches and all of that. Okay. But listen, there is nothing you can do successfully if you think eh, that, uh, the IPOB leadership, eh, they cannot be trusted. <laughs> and when I ask them, what do you mean by you can't trust them? I was told, number one, IPOB is not registered in Nigeria. Okay. We are all talking about uh, doing away with everything in Nigeria, by the way. So which means Nigeria need to validate IPOB before they can be you know what I mean? I'm like, that is not good enough to say they can't be trusted. Do you know that IPOB is registered in London as a private organization? I was like, okay. Which means as an organization. But the full meaning of IPOB is indigenous people of Biafra. And that should be the full meaning of their identity. Okay. So if an organization called Radio Biafra is championing the Biafra struggle. Spo I mean, and then the people who listen to the Radio Biafra identify themselves as IPOB, Indigenous People of Biafra. It is not an organization. It's actually the people. Now, if you are a Biafran and you put it in your document, in order to deny that, that's where I disagree with Linas. And I know you are watching. And I hope you can make an amend amendment. You can make correction. Because we all need ourselves, right? In your document, eh, you deliberately removed Biafra. 
you started referring to Biafrans as Lower Niger something. I can't, I, can't, I can't remember what you put it as. Lower Niger something. And you said historically, it is the true name of the people of that part. How do you make that up? How can you think that will fly? Right? I am not from Biafra. Honestly, I am not. All right? But if you think some people from Lower Niger this are the Biafrans, without them eh, publicly saying, or you showing that massive representation like the indigenous people of Biafra have shown, this is about making a statement and enjoying the total support of the people, guiding people to where they want to be, eh, does not include changing their identity simply because some of you have read further about the history and then you have made the position a position that is never ever subjected to anything referendum i am not too young and even if i'm too young to know what happened in biafra during the time but i remember that a referendum was conducted and the name was chosen right the referendum was conducted for everyone who were part of uh, the old eastern region which covers what is today the Niger Delta, as they call them now, yeah? I am part of those who believe in, you know, people evolving, right? We cannot be imprisoned by history. But listen, when you want to make a difference, you have to prove it, show it, before you can then say, those who have done so far should be discredited. I am not that kind of a person. And that is why I stopped talking about Ninas. That mistake seems to be so general. And if you remember, when our own respected Pa uh, Banji Akintoye, the leader, our leader of, uh, oh, I mean, I mean, sorry, Ilanomo uh, Udua, uh, Pa Akintoye also uh, sort of supported that kind of sentiment against the IPOB. And that unsettles me. I have to be honest with you. I got really unsettled. But I realized that it is deeper. Nina's comprises of uh, organizations that, rec that include the one that I respect a lot. But you see this biasness? is one of the reasons why Bokwari and the rest can still do what they are doing as they are doing now. I am so grateful to Sunday Igbo. He has shown that leadership requires at least patience and tolerance, understanding and respect. If you want to lead, you will be, in order for you to be respected, you must have the ability to respect others, even if you disagree with their way. You don't go all out to say you either take it or not. You have no headway. And Ninas has done so greatly well that if you are watching me, please do something. I have been one of the advocates of uh, you know, consolidation, uh, collaboration, let the South come together. All these organizations who are doing a lot in their own capacity. If you don't have any political affiliation with Nigeria, if you don't have any hidden agenda, lay it open, everything. Welcome everybody. Biafrans are moving for Biafra. Okay? Let that be. Oduduans are moving for the Dua Republic. Please, let that be. Don't bring any complication. And please, it is not a competition. I keep telling people, listen, the issue of trying to talk about what is going on in Nigeria, those who are putting their lives on the line, going extra miles to make it this whole thing and make the difference, even though they are not many yet, but their difference is being felt significantly. It is not a competition, okay? It is not. If you can respect everybody's position, listen to one another, at least try to listen to one another. Not this ego and all that stuff. I believe there's a great thing that can be done by Ninas. I really personally believe. They have the capacity, right? But the leadership, which is not just a leadership, right? Ninas comprises of all the organizations who have come together from all the parts of Southern Nigeria, including even in Northern Nigeria. Those who believe 
that the 1999 constitution is the fraudulent uh, book or the fraudulent document that has brought about this much division, killings, insecurity, and poverty. And until it is done with, which brought about the constitutional force major last year, these are steps that are called legal steps, which are expected to be also be in the pipeline as we are all uh, creating awareness, raising education and all of that, of why things cannot continue like this. But you can't ruin that by being selective. I don't want to say what they tell me about uh, the leaders of uh, the leadership of IPOB. I won't be helping because I don't want to sit down here to criticize Ninas. I'm just saying I am not comfortable with that. And to be honest, it is one of the reasons why I slowed down talking about Ninas. I slowed down eh, working with many of these uh, organizations with Ninas. This biasness is completely against my belief. I am somebody who believes in live and let live. I don't like imposing. And that's why I appeal to my uh, Biafran brothers. Don't be like them. Don't be what you preach against. Okay? The reason why everybody is asking for a referendum is because it will give everyone the opportunity to decide where they want to be. That is your inalienable right that I believe that uh, it has just a Biafran, proud Biafran. You are, you are expected to exercise that right if you want to be part of a Biafran country or not. That right also includes those who I, you know, kind of love to call the uh, coastal Biafrans. I'm not naming you. You have your identity. And that's one thing I said, a referendum will help in making or determining where everybody want to be. Nigeria won't allow that. A conversation around it, won't, they won't let it happen. And that is why organizations like Ninas and the rest should be supported. You should continue to support them until you probably feel otherwise. I don't see any reason why Ninas should be condemned. You may have your own kind of suspicion. They have theirs too. And all this biasness is why I said, if you don't drop them, you will never listen to yourselves. And if you don't, if you don't close ranks, with everyone, you cannot bring down this hegemony. You cannot bring back down this establishment. You cannot make any changes. Why the killings will continue. Thank you for somebody who brought that up. I've always wanted to talk about it. However, let's get fully into it. We said, if uh, Bokuari, who have the capacity to, get, uh, to protect everyone, from wherever you, uh, you are, even as a Nigerian, let's even take it that way. Do you not have every, I mean, any right to live? Don't you have a right to live? Do you know that uh, it is also human right to have electricity? It is human right to have uh, basic education. And it is your right, human right, to have access to affordable health care. It is your right eh, to feel safe in any part of your country. This right are supposed to be defined, clearly defined, uh, in your constitution, but they are not. However, in that same constitution, you are supposed to be protected by those who swore to, who swore to protect you. But in this regard, those who swore to protect you are busy eh, trying to shut you down while they pay hugely, huge amount of money to terrorists who actually use the money eh, to further their campaign of terror while your soldiers are either being sent to their death in the hands of all these terrorists that will never stand trial but for any reason, right? Or your soldiers are being sent to come after you for asking them to protect you. The people who demonized IPOB, they have already started demonizing Sunday Igbo. They want to see him killed. There is a rally in Lagos on the 3rd of uh, July. Very close. It's about just uh, five days away. Right? They want to see him killed because... Why would they want to have a, or ask for Oduduwa Republic 
when one of them can actually be a president anytime soon. But you see, this storm that is coming is actually beyond, is far more than just the Ududuwa Republic, the Biafra Republic, and every other republic that will come out of Nigeria in the coming days, weeks, months, and years. You need to know one thing. When people talk about Ududuwa Republic, Ududuwa Republic, Biafra, 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 it is not something that is going to come tomorrow. It is not something that is going to come next month. But there are events that are going to lead to you agreeing that in fact, hmm, you don't see Nigeria surviving this. Some of us have come to that conclusion because you see, the storm we are talking about is beyond the issue of uh, Fulani terrorists coming to your farms and Fulani terrorists killing people or Fulani terrorists with their AK-47 under the Okada driving and riding the Okada in Lagos waiting for the day they will tell them to kill 200, kill 500 just for two hours or three hours just destroy everywhere, no police will come, no military will come just send that fear away, right? It is beyond that too, okay? As you are watching this video it is obvious now that the type of terrorists who have taken over the northern Nigeria, they have the capacity to turn Nigeria, the entire Nigeria, to Syria eh? within a week, if they choose to. Many of you were waiting for your own attack to look like Fulani terrorists moving cows to your village. Ah, you are so wrong. The attacks and the storm that whoever actually succeed Boko Hari, if they manage to hold on tight, continue the killings, and continue to maintain the fear that kept everybody to never agree that it is time to shut it down, close it down today. If they maintain that till 2023, which indeed, with the chaos and anarchy that will be in Nigeria back then, I mean, then, including all the desperation of the politicians who also want to take a last shot if they could unseat Pokwari, all this chaos and everything will eventually make you believe that there is a plan that Pokwari is not living. How they are going to arch it and how they are going to plot, plot it, we don't know. But let's say they manage to put the stunt, as many as those who will die before then, let's, let's say they manage to put the stunt until... 2023, ask yourself, eh, who is that person that is going to then come and then will begin the recruitment of new soldiers for Nigeria and then will be able to give them the real gun to go after the real terrorists and will also be able to close your border in northern Nigeria to stop the influx of these terrorists. And not just that, though, they would then come back to try, if possible, within a year, and try and bring at least 10 to 15 million of you out of poverty by manufacturing his own money. I don't know. And then provide security that will make farmers go back to their farms. I don't know how he's going to do it. And somebody can tell you that God can bring somebody. That was what they told them, the people of Northeast, in 2015. They said, vote for Bukwari. All of your problems will disappear. Your children kidnapped. Eh? They will be returned. In fact, all of you whose houses were burnt, you will be returned to your homes. Those people who became refugees, when I mean, they became refugees inside Nigeria under good luck, Egberi, Jolantan, PDP. Eh? Many, many of them have been killed now in IDP camp because Boko, is that they were killed by terrorists or they were killed by hunger or sickness. Now, before Bokwari came in, they said about uh, one, I mean, about uh, 10 million. Uh, no, what am I even saying? No, they said about uh, one million uh, people were in IDP camp. Six years after that, they now have uh, more than 10 million people 
in refugee camps, not just in Nigeria, even outside Nigeria. If you go to Niger, those countries that you see so, eh, many, many refugees from Kasina, from uh, Niger, from uh, Shokoto, from all these places, they are living in all these places today. So which means more people ended up in IDP camp. More people were killed. In fact, right, between December, between uh, June last year and June 2021, uh, over 1,000 uh, school children have been kidnapped. Only about 500 of them have been rescued. More than 500 are still in the captivity of the, uh, of the Boko Haram. Now, that's what they told them in 2015. Don't worry. Once you bring somebody now, Somebody that can preach unity better so that the people can, you know what I mean? What is he going to do to those Bukwari promised land? And they have been waiting for them to be given their land. And as we speak, APC is working a day and night to ensure that these lands are granted just today. Or, yeah, today in the news, they said the uh, Governor Autumn, Benue State Governor, eh? He say, says, if Fulanese, if they want to ranch, if they want to build ranches in Benue, they will give them land. It is not so clear. If they give them land, means okay, they will bring money to build ranches. Or Autumn eh, is probably thinking that, oh boy, now two years remain oh, before before these people go kill me. Last last, eh, they will still do what they will do. Maybe I should just give them the land, build them the ranches, and tell the people that Fulanese are bringing money to build ranches. This is the same thing they are doing in your state. They are building ranches. They said it's a livestock, blah, 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 blah. And then they are desperate. Who is going to come and uh, change all of that and restore back uh, your unity that they said there is now missing, that the unity you never had? Who is that person who is going to come and talk to this kind of guy? A terrorist in northern Nigeria that kills soldiers and brag about it. Who is going to come and change that if they tell you that someday Nigeria will go better, someday somebody will do something that will make all of us not to ask for break up again, not to say that oh, Nigeria should break. Who is coming? Yeah, who is coming for this guy? <laughs> Yet <laughs> Jane, <laughs> Ranam <laughs> And they all say the same thing. He's not the only person. That's that's how they talk. Even those ones that met uh, Gumi.
that's how they talk. Nobody can touch us. You see that place they are recording that, eh? There are government officials there, okay? There are soldiers there. There are policemen there, DSS, all of them, okay? Now, despite all this insecurity that has brought serious economic destruction to Nigeria, especially Northern Nigeria, right? They have also tried, succeeded in making it, whenever you now stand up to ask Bukwari or the rest of all these victims to say, why don't you come together and get rid of these criminals? Then they turned it to the North versus the South. Do you get that? The divide and rule. The North versus the South. When the young people came together to say, we want government to end police brutality. We want government to be accountable. We want government to prosecute, uh, you know, uh, criminal policemen and all of that. And we actually want government to provide insurance for every policeman or policewoman in Nigeria so that they will find their, their job worthy enough that uh, corruption will at least reduce. What did they face them with? Death, killings, and all of that, because that is the only thing they know. But the only thing that, has, that is yet to happen is that... Uh, the people are yet to, re to return the gesture. It could have happened during the answers, but the people are still, the, 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 the young people in Nigeria, they are still the product of that system. They are not superhuman. They are not different so much. They are product of that system, even though they found courage to group together, eh, to make such a worldwide acknowledged, uh, you know, show of uh, their displeasure with their government but they are still product of that system eventually the system won they got crushed liberty they couldn't get security they couldn't get the economy that they asked the government to work they couldn't get that as, as well now it was back to zero so the only thing that has sustained these criminals is because they have succeeded in maintaining the violence the chain of violence and you ask yourself, who is going to stop all of that? When Bukwari is gone, nobody. It is going to get worse. Uh, Madhu, Bogu, Madhu, thank you very much for your super chats there. Uh, I'm going to read your super chats. Tell them also that IPOB is a registered organization here. I live and under the command of Mazin Namdekanu. Exactly. I used London because the person used London. Okay, said so it's registered in the UK, but I'm made to understand that uh, IPOB, you know, IPOB, they are registered in more than 140 countries. Does that make them fake? <laughs> of course not, except when you disagree with them, when you don't like what they do, when you don't like their rhetoric, as the people say, you don't like this, you don't like that. But guess what? You can't fight the battle for them if you exclude them in a way. Thanks for that additional information there, uh, Madhu, uh, my brother. So uh, let us continue. Who is going to stop that? Referendum is not war, they say. But when you go to, when you see the criminals in charge, what they preach is violence. Look at what Hope Uzodinjo is doing in Imo State. Should the good people of Imo State, I'm talking about those who call themselves. Uh, elders or leaders in Imo states should they have should they keep quiet eh should they have kept quiet this long with what opus or enjoys there's even a video i'm going to share that with you i need an interpreter please i need somebody who can type fast i want to read the meaning of what he said there they said opus or dijo is bragging in this video i'm going to play it for you now he's bragging in that video this is somebody that is pretty much imposed on the people of Imo State by the Supreme, uh, Supreme Court of Nigeria, led by Tanko Technicality, the plane driver, Babala Wefe, your CJN. This guy came forth in what was called their election in uh, 2019, fourth, fourth position, four. But Tanko Technicality upgraded him and declared him the winner. And since then, eh, 
they have turned Imo State to Borono, courtesy this guy, who I don't know what he actually wants to prove. I don't know if these guys think they are like uh, immortals that will never die. Right? But I need an interpreter. Help me. What is Opus or Dinjo saying here? My plan of this is the party. After God, na Nigeria time the next person who buhari. Oya unike se koko ndi eba okan ndi eba koko nyu eba okan nyu eba. Eli ya igaji na eme ka eme ka osu koko nyu na ba i. Moko ni umu bendos. So no gala. Dear boys, bidi me meeting. Local government of na bidi me meeting. I let negotiate the power I negotiate. And when you want to get in the right here, alone, without your people, and you let them on Aka. Because no one man can walk alone. The most perfect human being ever on earth to Jesus Christ. Or only they alone. I want to have disciples. They let up all our boys, lie and run on them. So I got land. Can we enjoy that here? I am hungry here. Okay. So he's doing his own. Uh, he's doing their work, telling the people he's killing in Imo State to uh, join, uh, you know, APC because after God in Nigeria, na Buari. I don't know. You know, it didn't say Buhari is bigger than God, though. So don't misunderstand that, by the way. But it says, after God, a Buhari, because it's only Buhari that will order bomb to be dropped on innocent people, civilians, in villages where they have no relationship at all with either ISWAP or ISIS. Why the ISWAP ISIS? They are doing their own work, collaborating. Uh, my people are saying, wow, wow. Wala, wala, don't they, they, they? It's just that some people don't understand how that wahala affects them. But let me explain it to you in a, you know, in a layman uh, language. You see those guys? In 2013, 2012, 2013, America won American... Uh, Ambassador to Nigeria then says something about Nigeria may break up in 2015. He came out to say that's not what he meant. He only said the event of how Nigeria was going, Nigeria may witness a civil war, a serious uh, insecurity challenge that will eventually lead to Nigeria civil war. He then elaborated more on what will prompt that. One of them was the, the fourth deadliest terrorist group in the whole world, the Fulani terrorists. Having gained ground, if they should, having gained ground in the Sahel and all those areas, Maghreb and all of those areas, they are trying to work with the Fulani terrorists, I mean, with the Boko Haram. And it's like going to be when, uh, this is Ararombo, that is, uh, when thunder 
eh, mixed with bomb. You can imagine what the bank will be. So they said if Nigeria is not, if Nigeria is not careful, a Bokwari must never be given any access to power, or else, eh, your Nigeria will be better. I mean, Somalia will be better than your Nigeria. Even in Somalia, they are killing terrorists too. Just yesterday, in Somalia, Al Shabab, those who are Al Shabab terrorists, you have been hearing about Al Shabab, Al Shabab. They killed 38 or so of them, or something like that. Right? after finding them guilty they said nigeria will break up in 2015 from 2015 oh nigeria will begin the journey of total collapse now the economy will first collapse then after that civil war will come in right deprivation denial uh, you know and all of that will also they will also creep in now you see that stage now stage by stage bokwari is the one that came to divide nigeria but all of you will not pay attention yet until the last day, right? So what they did was, prior to 2015, they went all around the terrorist-prone West Africa and beyond. And they were telling all the terrorists to come to Nigeria. Nigeria is a big place. Come to Nigeria. Because they needed more violence. So that one way or the other, there may be a power sharing arrangement. So that even if Bokwari is not declared the winner, they will just say, let us share power for peace. But unfortunately, good luck, Egberi Jolantan considered for peace to reign. That's how they disappointed all the terrorists they brought in. That is why when they came in, the first three, four months, there was no single Boko Haram attack. And then they said it was Boko Haram's body language. Because they now, the terrorists now know that there is a new, a new sheriff in town. Everybody must behave. We don't know saying that Bobo, Femi Opo, no addition or sold to all of you. New sheriff in town, new terrorist leader in town. They are doing, uh, they are cleaning house. And since then, instead of us to be dealing with a terrorist uh, Boko Haram, suddenly ISWAP started. Suddenly Fulani terrorists started. Suddenly bandits started. And they all operate the same way. Coordinated attack. Well, Boko Haram doesn't just attack overnight. Or that's why, like cowards, they attack you overnight when you are sleeping. How come? What happened? Where is the change? Where is the promise? They say, oh boy, if you want change, you go see him or if you never see him. So as those terrorists took over and they continued to advance, eh? they were sending farmers away from their farms. You see these things that you are reading about now? All these things you are reading about in Yoruba land here and there, in Igbo land and everywhere, eh? including in Niger Delta. Ni they, they, those guys who call themselves Niger Delta Avengers. You see all these things that are now happening everywhere. Those ones are just the aftermath. Since they cannot manage the terrorists anymore, they will have to spread them everywhere into your forest. What do you they use forest for? The forests are just there. Leave them there. We will create local government for them. That's what brought you to this level. As those ones are busy eh, spreading the campaign of violence, the one that they have managed to send into the spine of our people, and when they talk, they will say, eh, hey, this will do a republic, eh? Now, wala, oh, hey, see, waiting Sunday, we will call, so this and that. You see? It is deliberate. As they are doing that, eh? There are others who have also gained access into power to influence government decisions that will punish you. Punish you for trying to be free, for trying to speak up. And guess what? That is exactly what Nigeria represents. And if you don't fight that to break away from it, it is a mental thing to start with, by the way. These likes will continue to rule you. 
and you have to deal with the consequences of this kind of people in charge of what happened to you. I've spoken to minds of their constituencies. If I was speak with mind of my constituency, I would include the president himself inside. Yes, because out of uh, 360 of us, I'm the only one voted by the president. Look, Nigeria first. Let's be honest to ourselves. And let's call a spade a spade. Uh, the media is at war. We can see what's happening on the social media. I've worked in NCC. This is my former boss for 10 years. I know what his department, the cybercrime, are doing. We should please, please regulate the media. If that tweet was not brought down, the dirty things that will happen in Nigeria will be less than what we are seeing now. Because if the minister did not ban the tweet, by the instruction of the president, the kind of insult the sovereignty of Nigeria we have from the users of tweet would be more dangerous than what we are facing now. Let's let's tell ourselves the truth. Nigeria first. Nigeria first. Sometimes when I'm reading tweets, I'm disappointed with the youths. We are the future of Nigeria. Look, I I went to a unity school, Federal Government College Kwali, when people from Southeast are coming. We line up, shouting. They are coming with their bosses. But that thing is missing. Why? Why are we bringing issues, trying to cause confusion where there is no confusion? It's just interest. For God's sake, what social media? Are we eating social media? Let's go back to the, to, to the resources and harvest it, my brothers. And let's keep this thing aside and face the real problem we are facing in Nigeria. Thank you very much. <laughs> that is the person is uh, Bokwari's nephew by the way he's from Niger he's not from Nigeria he's a Nigerian Nigerian he's from Niger like uh, Bokwari but he's the one representing Daura federal constituency where Bokwari come from that's Bokwari's nephew you listen to all that about two minutes video can you make any sense of what he said like from the beginning to the end can you make any sense now imagine having 360 of that kind of a guy in a room eh, talking about you, talking about your future. Just imagine that for a minute. That is exactly the jokers eh, from different tribes, from different backgrounds, from different this and that. Those are the jokers that speak and decide for Nigeria. He said, he said if they did not pull down that tweet, the tweet where Bokwari threatened the Igbos that he would speak to them if their parents, if their parents didn't tell them about the civil war of 1967 to 1970, he would speak to them in the language they understand to remind them of 1967 to 1970. He threatened them with civil war, genocide. And that's somebody who went to unity school, Kota system. Shabi? I mean, is that not the unity school? Is, it, is unity school not the quota system? Is all those uh, federal schools, unity schools? Eh? They are filled with 80% quota system. The remaining 20% are those of you who are going to be secretary to, a, to an idiot who is a director who can't even write his name without uh, copying it elsewhere and is your boss and you will be the one doing the work quota system is honorable so could you make any sense of what we said that if they didn't put that tweet eh, things would have been more dangerous than it is right now in nigeria <gasps> bokwari's bokwari's tweets threatening the eagles eh, will be more dangerous than the ban twitter for that if not, Twitter would be more dangerous than those who kidnap school children. Eh? Those who are murdering and massacring innocent people up and down. That is the type of people you have. And that is why they don't want to have any conversation at all. Because uh, 
even even uh, Obasanjo, Obasanjo, the Baba fake man, Baba one Nigeria. Hmm. Let me tell you something. One of the things that gets uh, young people discouraged from standing up or asking questions is that there's something called respect. Respect. Respect the elders. Listen to me very well. If you are a young person, look at me very well, okay? It is a very, very good thing to be respectful. You have to respect people, right? It's a very good thing. But don't disrespect yourself trying to respect people. That is called eye service. And in this world, eh? Showing eye service. Ojuaye, carry me. Kale for. Hmm? If you are a Jebu, you understand that. They will say, Kale for. Just to say. That is not respect. Another thing is that uh, respect is end. Okay? You must, you must be psychologically uh, matured enough to know what will make somebody end your respect. Respect is not, it's not, it's not given. It is end. Right? Third thing. Whoever disrespects you, whoever disrespects your common sense, eh, deserves no respect from you. Okay? What am I trying to, I mean, why am I trying to say this to you? Those, the likes of a person, they had the opportunity. They had the opportunity of uh, setting things straight. He had it, in fact, twice. There was a time he had the opportunity of being the head of state. What did he do? He sabotaged freedom of speech. He destroyed whatever could have been the, you know, the real um, identity of those nationalities, all the nationalities in Nigeria today. He didn't do that. Then he compensated himself with a bogus democracy, a handwritten, orchestrated democracy of his. That Bukwari came to truncate. He had another chance in 1999. The chance to like, actually like atone for the missed opportunities. What did he do? He was everywhere. He wanted to live forever. He believed that he was the only Nigerian who actually loved Nigeria, who can actually fix Nigeria for eight years. Eh? He was carrying himself as that person, the only person without any successor. What, led, uh, what, what, what uh, happened after him? Everything he thought he was building for his legacy and his name in the name of Nigeria, right before his eyes, got all oh, got destroyed. I mean... Not because he actually did them, uh, you know, successfully anyway. It was all for the part of the old, uh, you know, uh, game. However, he's lost the track. He's lost the, tra I mean, the race. He's lost everything. Now, he's telling us that Nigeria will not break. Fine. If Nigeria doesn't break when you are here, Nigeria will break when you are gone. In fact, it will be a good thing. To witness it so that you can see how wasted all the years you have killed people sacrificed human beings just to keep a ragtag unplanned country together for the sake of keeping it together right i would love to see obasanjo still alive even though obasanjo himself came out that uh, it is ridiculous to think bukwari is dead right i don't think bukwari is dead physically all right I know personally that uh, Bukwari is dead, uh, you know, pretty much like uh, what they call Okwaye, a mentally dead person who get pumped up on different drugs every now and then. Most of them that makes him more kind of a drowsy, lost his mind, not here, neither here nor there, and more reason why they keep him away. But you see, those who believe that Bukwari is dead, no joke. Eh? What Obasan just said in this video actually got them angry. So I'm going to keep my mouth shut. And I will let Obasan just speak to you himself. We have moved from 120 million to two, over 200 million. We've added the population of France to our own population. And if we continue the way we are going by the year, two, uh, by the year 2050, we will be the third largest country in the world. If we continue by the year 
3,000, uh, we will be the largest uh, country in the world. Now, what are we going to do to handle that? How are we going to handle that population? And you can say to me, mm, you'll be gone maximum another 20 years, I'm gone. But you'll be here. If not to 3,000, you will be here to 2,050. If we do not start getting it right now, we will not get it right by the year 2050. But population by itself may not be a liability if we do what we have to do. But if we don't do what we have to do, which we are not doing now, population will be a liability. So, what should we do? We should also be telling ourselves part of education is that population management. Some people don't like population uh, family uh, thing and all that. But whatever you do, you must manage your population for the benefit of all that are in that uh, uh, within within your nation. So, what do they have to do? Values. What are the values that we cherish? One of the things that I found very disappointing in government was that integrity is no longer something that is cherished. Um, loyalty is no longer something that you cherish. You have a meeting and your party. In fact, the first thing, the lesson they were trying to teach me in politics is that your party should not hold its own meeting until your opponent or the opposition has held its own so that you know what the opposition has planned so that your own party will hold its own meeting to, to disturb what the opposition has planned. And when you have a man, you attend your own meeting at 12, and you finish at 1, and you hear that he went to another meeting at 2, and you say, ah, following morning, Olga, after the meeting, <laughs> That's politics. Ah, what sort of politics is that? That's politics. It's politics, disloyalty. It's politics, no, uh, uh, no, no, no honor. It's politics, not holding to something that you have decided. I believe that values which we seem to ignore, must be taken very, very 